Well, welcome back. I hope you've practiced, because we're going to be taking off, bro. There's a lot of shit you're going to be juggling. I'm Empire. Welcome back to class. Today, we're going to go over understeer. It's so exciting. You get to use your steering wheel like a little big kid. Uh, quick overview. Understeer is the car rotating less than what you're asking. Now keep in mind, you're going to want to start at the extreme, so there's no doubt in your mind what understeer is, and what it feels like. Once that feeling is crystal clear, then we'll dial the intensity back while I Mr. Miyagi you into utilizing understeer in a way that makes you a better and safer driver. All right, homie, for this drill, we're expanding upon the previous video in regards to vision and references. We're going to find the absolute fucking limit of the track. You're going to raw dog that edge, bruh, by the time we're done. There are a few ways to find out what your tires are in comparison to the track. The easiest way is to get into chase cam, park your car so the wheels are right alongside that grass, then go into your preferred view, and like you did in the previous video with the references, just line up the edge of that track with something in your HUD or your dash. If you're in VR and you don't want to take off your headset, man, that's fine, bro. Just slowly drive towards the edge of the track until you hear or feel the grass, and then you pull back to a little bit. Align the track with something on your dash. Now, why are we doing this? Why go through all this trouble? Uh, it's simple. The larger the radius, the faster you can go. And you wanna be fast, don't you? Once you're comfortable with having the car drive on the edge of the track, it's time for the first drill. First, let's tweak some assists to get the most out of these exercises. Now turn on automatic transmission, turn off the ABS, and turn on the driving markers in the driving line assistance menu. If you're on a controller, you may also need to increase your sensitivity to the max, or at least for this exercise. GC7 has tools in place to make driving on a controller a smoother experience, but we don't really want that for this. Once that's done, you're gonna get the car to the farthest right as you possibly can, and you're gonna crank that steering wheel all the way to the left, aiming for that curbing. Now, just sit back and you feel that glorious understeer as you blast off into a fail time trial. Now, this is what understeer feels like at the extreme end of the spectrum. The car simply can't respond and cut in at that kind of speed. Now, once you understand what this understeer feels like, you'll need to learn how to induce it. And you don't have to crank the steering wheel all the way to the left, but it's easier to do it that way. Now, as a tool, understeer can be used to have a very predictable line that you can take, you can follow, you can reproduce that allows you to extract the maximum amount of grip and beyond from the front tires. For this drill, you need to find out how far back you need to be for that car's outermost tires to go over the apex curbing from one limit right to the next. All without incurring a penalty and failing the time trial. I mean, you're going to fail it anyways after you pass the apex and go flying off the course. You just don't want to do it prematurely. So before we get started on our last drill for this video, we're going to work on a brake warm up. Basically, we're going to go to 80% with our eyes closed. If you missed the mark, that's fine. Just adjust it to 80%, then reset, close your eyes, and push back to 80 again. Continue doing it until you can hit 80, bang on every time. Now that we know what understeer feels like, we can now use it as a tool to help us learn any car track combo that we can think of so much more faster than before. You have a larger safety margin where you can push without crashing. When you understeer, the car's path is very predictable, and that will change depending on how much throttle you can give. Knowing this, if you can understeer through a corner following the racing line, you know nearly to the exact miles per hour how fast you can take that corner. Here's how it's going to work. You're going to brake early at the 100 meter board with only 80% brake power. Before you turn in, you're going to drop your brakes, and then you're going to induce your understeer and use your throttle to keep your car on the racing line. Just modulate up or down depending on what the car is doing. If the car is turning too far towards the inside, give more throttle. If a car is pushing far too wide, drop the throttle some more. Your goal is to 
line your car up so that you are able to hit 100% throttle right before you hit the final apex. So let's go over what constitutes a successful run in your case. One, when you brake, you brake in a straight line, 80% throttle, your car at the edge of the track. Basically, you're on the rumble strip. Two, when you turn in, you're off the brakes, you're on the throttle, and you're inducing your understeer, hitting the curb on the inside. Three, your throttle is continuously applied throughout the corner. And four, you are going to have to do a 100% throttle right before you hit the apex on the way out. Tires over the rumble strip. Five, you cannot lift your foot off the throttle after the apex. You live or die by your exit. This part of the video is when we take everything we've learned and apply it in a practical sense. The point is to not push for your fastest lap, but instead to follow the car's line while understeering every single corner. Work on your precision and keep the ABS off. Your lap time is important in its practicum. Your ability to make your tire suffer is. Now let me explain something to you, homie. Why I'm asking you to perform these three drills three times in a row with no failure in between. If you become competent and apply these concepts I went over with you in these last few videos, you would fucking dominate C rank and you would possibly find yourself in lower B rank. Yeah, even if you understeer for an entire race, listen, low B and C rank drivers are rarely on the limit. And if they were on the limit, it's because they're about to crash into a wall. I believe in you and you should be proud of yourself for all the work you put in so far.